Welcome back guys, Mad King Cordero here, and today we'll be taking a look at a typewriter. Now it's been a while since I've made a video, and uh, this is kind of an odd thing to start with since my channel is primarily about computers, but this was an unexpected find. I was in Goodwill a couple days ago, and I saw this guy on the shelf, and I thought, I'm never going to get a chance to own one of these because they're so fucking expensive otherwise, and this was only $9.99. Now, I already had a replacement ribbon from them, because those are just universal fit, uh, ribbons, and they'll fit on anything. So, uh, it's kind of cool that I have, like, a whole package here now. There's even still the protective uh, tape or whatever on the logo there, so it's all, like, minty fresh. In fact, that's what they call this color, mint. Um, and it's kind of a sought-after one, I guess, because I've seen ones on eBay and... Uh, Amazon for $166, which is insane. On the Michaels site, you can buy a red one of these for $99 uh, and then have it shipped to you. I don't know if it costs more in person. I think it might if you go to their store because usually it's marked up for the brick-and-mortar stores. Now you might be thinking, hey, this thing looks a lot like an Olympia SG. Well, yes, <laughs> It does look a lot like an Olympia SG, but I assure you, it's nothing like one. It is the cheapest typewriter you will ever see. Every piece of this thing is plastic. Uh, even the type heads themselves are plastic. It is so cheap. It's incredible. Now, I was looking online because I'm kind of curious about these things, and I, I was looking at the... Uh, Royal Epoch, which is another Chinese typewriter that is renowned for being terrible. And I noticed that the keyboards are the same. Uh, so I looked a little closer, and the whole mechanism, including the carriage, is exactly the same as a Royal Epoch. Uh, now, this is also exactly the same as a Royal Classic. In fact, this case is exactly the same with the minus of the small indentation there. They have a badge stuck on the front for the Royal uh, Classic, so slight molding difference there. But, otherwise, exactly the same machine, just different, more fun colors. Um, this machine, like I said, retails for way too much money. Like, if you bought one of these, you got way too much money to spend, and you should just be spending it on something real like a good one from the past, a real typewriter that was meant to do work. <clears throat> because this thing, as nice as it looks, is really ultimately just a toy. When you first get it, and you first take it out of the box, mine hadn't been adjusted or anything. The uppercase letters were way low, and the lowercase letters were high. I also had all my letters misaligned, so it looked a bit crazy. Um, uh, in fact, I have an example of that. Uh, where was it when I first got it? Here. There. I don't know if you can see that, hopefully. But it was very crazy. This is what it looked like right out of the box. Just everything was all kind of helter-skelter all over the place. Now, I've been messing with it for a bit, and... Uh, I've managed to straighten up the text a bit and gotten it to kind of type in a neat line, but it's still kind of crazy. And I think part of the problem is that I don't have the right tools. So I'm just kind of doing it by hand and eyeballing it. But um, also part of the problem is those plastic type heads. I don't think those are 100% like accurate because I think that there's minute differences between the spacing of the capitals and the lowercase. Um, because they seem to vary. There seems to be quite a lot of variance in where it lands on the page. It might be down just the fact that the type bars and this whole mechanism is very sloppy, but I think this is partially to blame. Um, I... By the way, that's a different thing from the SG. I, when I first got this, I thought it would hinge up like an SG. No, it's just sliding pegs. Very cheap. Very, very cheap. Economical. But it does work, so I mean, I'll give it points for that. Um, when I first got it, uh, everything was just kind of crazy. And I've been tweaking on this today for probably like 30 minutes, something like that. I even screwed up this. I tried to space it out because the letters where I wanted them to land kept catching. 
on this when I'd get it close to where I wanted it. But um, managed to kind of tweak it back to where it could be, or it should be, because I noticed when I spaced it out, um, the lettering went crazy. It went all over the place. So my first advice would be maybe try tightening this a little bit because it seemed to line it up a bit better when I did. Um, I also bent these down a bit because otherwise they catch on the type heads. Uh, when you are adjusting these, it's pretty common sense. You just take the letter you want, you know, and then bend it left to right to get it to go left to right. And uh, you should normally bend it forward or back to get it up or down, but I don't have the right tool for that. I've been kind of twisting them to see if that would help, but... Um, you know, mostly it has, but uh, I can't quite get it 100%. If anybody knows where I can get the right tool for that, that would be amazing. But um, in the meantime, uh, this $10 typewriter will have to deal with it as it is. Well, you might be asking yourself, how did you fix the shift problem? Uh, you can actually adjust that up and down like you would on a normal typewriter, except that it's not located underneath. Uh, where you would think it is, you, well, let me do margin release here, slide that past, you have to adjust, well, you can see that, let me get it out of the way, these two screws right here, this one is going to be your lowercase stop, where it sits when it's not in shift, see it's a long screw here, this one is your uppercase, and it's like this on both sides, so adjust both, um, I adjusted these, there are little nuts, so you got to tighten them back up afterwards. But um, when you do, then it will change where it sits when it is up or down. It's pretty simple, uh, but it makes a big difference. It really helps to straighten out all of the text. Flipping back around to the front here, we can take a look at the keyboard. Now, this is kind of a universal all English speaking regions keyboard. It has both pound symbol and cash symbol, which is pretty neat for an American such as myself. Not that I'll be using pound symbol, but it's neat to have it on there. It also has an exclamation mark down here, at symbol. All the regular stuff you'd expect to see. You don't usually see an exclamation mark on a portable like this, but, you know, it is present because it is the modern day, and you know, who wants to make an exclamation mark out of an apostrophe and a period anymore? It's a real pain in the butt. Now, on the side here, we have the black or secondary color selector. We have our tab set or clear, which is pretty cool. It's a nice feature. That's what this tab key is for. This is our margin release. And this is our high and low tension setting for the keys. It does actually make a difference. This is like maybe the first keyboard where I can actually feel the difference between uh, high and low settings. A neat thing about this typewriter is because it's so kind of bare bones, you can see exactly what the high and low setting does. It just puts tension on the bar here that uh, is used for pulling on that. And uh, it's super simple, but you know what? It works. Uh, not that I, anyone would really want to put more weight on their keys, I wouldn't think. But, you know, it is there if you need it. Now, taking a look at the carriage here, we have left and right margins. Like you would normally see, we have a paper support, which is quite nice. Not something I really expected to see on this thing. Um, carriage release over here. Bell works and everything. Uh, you have your select for how far or not you want the return to advance the roller uh, to give you spacing between lines. I usually set mine at two or one and a half, something like that. Because uh, one is just too close. It's just really, really cramped. Um, this actually can be folded down for some reason. Uh, I think that is just a holdover feature from the Royal Epoch, since that actually had a case. This machine does not, unfortunately. It would be nice to have a little briefcase type case to pop this in, like an SG or uh, you know any other typewriter from the era. Of course, like any other typewriter, you have your paper guides. You have little rollers to keep your paper down and flat. Um, down here you have your release for uh, tension, and that's about it. Um, that is pretty much all the features on this thing. It's pretty standard, but uh, it's pretty nice. 
Okay, so last but not least, let's show it in action, which is probably what everybody wants to see. Go ahead. Now, I had a little bit of trouble with my paper guides here because they seem to get caught quite a bit. I'll probably take it apart and see if I can't bend them uh, away and stop them from doing that because that is frustrating as heck uh, because obviously it crinkles your paper and you can't just whoosh, whoosh, get it on there without having to think about it too hard. Okay, so let's go ahead. It's <laughs> not what I meant to try it, but whatever, you get the idea. So yeah, that's it. The uh, We Are Memory Keepers Typecast Typewriter. As you can see, hopefully, I have straightened up the font quite a bit on there. It's not quite as bad as it used to be. Still pretty wacky, but I think it can be corrected. It's not completely hopeless, as some might say. I like it. It's an interesting typewriter. Would I pay $100 or more pair for it? Hell no. Um, I would pay 10 maybe, at the most. 20 it would be really pushing it um, because that is a lot of plastic and it is extremely cheap and you have to do a lot of work to get it even like remotely usable for anything serious. So I'm at King Corduroy. Hopefully you found this interesting um, and I will hopefully uh, try and bring you more content in the near future as well as maybe a statement on what's going on with the channel, what I'd like to do in the future and more. So yeah, like and subscribe. Uh, comment below. I always read all of your comments, and I will catch you guys later.